In a country far, far away, there were two sisters famous for their arrogance and jealousy. They were so jealous of their sister Beauty that there was nothing they wouldn't do to have her beauty and happiness. That day, as the sisters were getting ready to go to the piano recital that Beauty was going to give, they started to argue as usual. Oh, why did you take my comb again? First of all, it's not yours, it's Beauty's. And secondly, even if you comb it, your hair doesn't look like anything good. <laughs> Finally, when the comb broke and there was nothing left to fight, the sisters started making plans to upset Beauty. On the other hand, the evil witch Rosa, who lived in a huge castle, looked at her ugly face in the mirror and threw the dried roses in her hand to the ground. Mm, they just don't work. I'll be ugly forever. <laughs> Even when the witch Rosa was a young witch, everyone made fun of her ugliness. She tried thousands of spells and magics, but she couldn't get any better. One day, while she was about to crush the roses in her garden and make perfume to remove her ugly smell, her cat Mir Mir got tangled in her feet and the bowl of crushed roses fell over the witch's head. At that moment, the big moles on her face were gone. Her fluffy and ugly hair had become like silk. Huh? My nose! My hair! My... Hands! Oh, I'm beautiful! Mir Mir, look! I'm beautiful now! The witch Rosa, who found a way to become beautiful, would wake up early every morning and cast the spell until a prince came and plucked the roses in her garden. While Rosa was covering her mirror with a sheet, she heard a crack. Two sisters, Barbara and Bianca, jostled through the castle door. Is this the witch Rosa's castle? Hey! Is there anyone there? there? The jealous sisters of beauty were very frightened when they suddenly met the witch in the hall of the castle. Who are you? And what are you doing here? The sisters complained to the witch that Beauty was living a life she did not deserve and that they wanted to end her happiness at today's piano recital. Hmm, so what do you want from me? Cast a spell on her! Let her be fat like a ball so that the prince will not want her! <laughs> Ugh. But the prince will love her even if she's fat. Then let's imprison her on the top of the mountain with seven caves. Oh, but the prince will find her there too. When the sisters couldn't agree on a kind of decision and continued to argue, the witch Rosa cast a spell with her hand to silence them. She took a purple bottle from the potion cabinet and held it in the hand of one of the sisters. Drop three drops of this potion onto Beauty's piano. Then you can thank me. <laughs> the sisters left excitedly. It was evening. Beauty saw her sisters come to the piano recital too. Ah, oh, Barbara, Bianca, my dear sisters. I missed you so much. Hmm. Oh, we might have missed you too. Maybe. How small is your house? Small? <laughs> this is a palace, though. And the piano is too old, huh? Not old, actually. Antique. And very valuable. When Beauty was away, Barbara secretly took the potion out of her pocket and handed it to Bianca. And Bianca dropped three drops of the elixir on Beauty's piano. Beauty did not realize this. K 
came and started playing the piano. Black smoke appeared around her. The song that was playing suddenly turned into a loud noise. Beauty was banging on the piano keys with everyone's astonished stares. Prince Richard tried to calm Beauty, but failed. All the guests left the palace in shock. The sisters also happily went to the room reserved for them. The next day, Beauty started yelling again at everyone she saw. Princess, what happened to you? What's wrong? What happened? Isn't it enough to be married to a beast? Ugh! Prince Richard was very upset by what Beauty had said, as if his good-hearted, gentle princess was gone. Instead, a cruel, angry woman came. Beauty was firing a cook, a gardener, a maid with a new excuse every day. The sisters were watching with pleasure and waiting in their rooms in the palace for the day when the prince would leave Beauty. I wonder if this palace remains for me when the prince leaves Beauty. As I am the elder, both the palace and the prince are my right. On the day Prince Richard was fixing the keys of the piano, he noticed an empty potion bottle lying under the piano. Oh no! What if this bottle... Picking up the potion bottle, he knew it was the work of the witch Rosa. Immediately, he got on his horse and set off for the witch's castle. The castle door opened with a bang and Prince Richard entered. What do you want from us, witch? Why did you cast a spell on Beauty? It wasn't me who did it. It was Beauty's sisters. <laughs> the prince desperately asked the witch Rosa how he could fix this. I will break the spell. Only if you give me something to bring back my beauty. Prince Richard took the wish necklace that he always carried with him, the only memory of his mother, from his pocket, and handed it to the witch Rosa. He said she could wish whatever she wanted, but she had to wait for the full moon three days later. The witch Rosa took the necklace and hid it in a box. She cast a spell towards the mirror and turned to the prince. You got what you wanted. I broke the spell on beauty. But if this necklace doesn't work, fear me, prince. The prince happily returned to his palace. He went to beauty and told her what had happened one by one. And Beauty called all the employees and apologized to all of them. Seeing this, Barbara and Bianca accepted their defeat. Oh, no! And left the palace. The witch Rosa has not yet realized that beauty and goodness are not outward appearances. Whereas if a person's heart is good, the light on his face is always beautiful. On a sunny day, Alice and her sister went out for a walk on the fields. Alice's sister was reading a book. Because of this, Alice got very bored. Right when she was thinking what she could do for fun, a white bunny passed by. The bunny was talking to himself. Alice was stunned because she had never seen a talking bunny before. The bunny took out a pocket watch and then... Oh no, oh no, I'm going to be so late. He said in a hurry. Alice was very impressed with what she saw. So curious to see what was going on, she went after the bunny. The bunny went through a hole in a tree trunk and Alice followed him through the same hole. Suddenly, she found herself falling down in a well. The well was very deep and Alice kept on falling down slowly. While going down, 
The little girl saw pictures, little wardrobes and shelves. Alice felt like she was going around the world. And finally, she fell on a soft surface. She had a long corridor in front of her. Alice got up and started to walk. She saw many locked doors along the corridor and the bunny disappeared. Alice feared that she would not be able to get out of there. Right at that moment, she saw a little golden key on a three-legged small table next to her. She took the key and tried to open all the locked doors, but the key was too small for the doors. Looking around sadly, Alice realised that there was another small door behind the curtain. When she put the key in the lock, the door opened immediately. Alice was very happy when the door opened. Behind the door, there was a very beautiful garden. But because she could not fit through the door, Alice could not go out. When she returned to the table inside, she noticed a bottle with a label saying, Drink me on it. Alice took the bottle and started drinking. As she drank the potion, she began to shrink. When she got small enough, she thought she could fit through the door. But when she got back to the key, she realised that she had gotten too small to reach the table. She started to cry. At that moment, she saw a cake on the floor. The cake had a label saying, Eat me. With curiosity, Alice took a bite from the cake. At that moment, she started to grow again. Now she could get the key, but was too big to go through the door. Alice was too tired. With no hope, she started to cry again. The tears running from her eyes started to form a big puddle that reached the end of the corridor. Suddenly, the white bunny passed her in a hurry. Alice called out. Sir, sir, please, hold on a minute, help me. The bunny got away fast, without even looking at Alice. But while running, he dropped his gloves and hand fan. Alice took his stuff from the floor, and when she started to fan herself, she started to shrink again. Right at that moment, she slipped and fell into the puddle. Alice and lots of different animals swimming in the water started to drift towards the shore. When they reached the shore, they were all wet and Alice saw the bunny again. This time the bunny thought she was his maid and asked her to bring his gloves and hand fan from his house. Alice went to the bunny's house in the forest. When she entered, she immediately found his gloves and hand fan. But right there, she saw another bottle on the table. She reached to the bottle and thought, if I drink this, maybe I can go back to my normal size. She took the bottle and drank the whole potion. Instead, she became so huge she could not even move in the house. What am I going to do now? How will I get out of here? In the meantime, the bunny was waiting for Alice impatiently. Fearing from Alice, the animals started to throw rocks into the house, breaking windows. The stones landing next to Alice started to turn into small cakes. When Alice started to eat these cakes, she started to shrink again and managed to go out of the house. But this time, unfortunately, she got too small. Poor Alice got so tiny she was lost between the little bushes in the woods. She started to think about what she can do to get back to her normal size. At that moment, she saw a puppy a little further away. When she called the puppy over to Pat, 
she realised how much smaller she was next to the dog. She almost got squashed by the puppy's paws. When she was running, she stumbled over a mushroom. There was a blue caterpillar on the mushroom. She asked the caterpillar what she can do to get back to her normal size. The caterpillar answered with a wise manner. One side of the mushroom I am standing on will make you grow. On the other side will make you shrink. Alice took a small piece from the mushroom and put it in her mouth. Right at that moment, she had gotten so big that she could not even see her feet. To shrink back to her normal size, this time she took a piece from the other side. By eating different amounts from both sides of the mushroom, she managed to come back to her normal size. She took two pieces from each side and held them in her hand. While she was walking, she came across a tiny house. But to be able to get in, she had to shrink again. Eating the mushroom pieces, she started to shrink again. When she entered the house, Alice found herself in a kitchen. Right in the middle of the kitchen, there was a duchess standing with a baby in her arms. And on the floor, a fat cat was looking at Alice, smiling. It was the first time Alice saw a smiling cat. So she asked, curiously, Why does your cat smile like that? Because this is a Cheshire cat, said the duchess. At the same time, the cat became invisible and the baby in the duchess' arms started to cry. The duchess passed the baby over to Alice. You rock the baby and stop her crying. I will go and play croquet with the queen. Alice took the baby and started to rock. Suddenly, the Cheshire cat appeared again and smiling again he talked to Alice. You need to find the Mad Hatter and the March Hare. <laughs> but be careful, they're both crazy. <laughs> right after their little chat, the Cheshire Cat disappeared again. Alice angrily yelled at the cat. Stop disappearing and reappearing again! You're freaking me out! Cheshire Cat appeared once again, smiling. Okay, then I will disappear slowly. Starting from his tail, Cheshire Cat started to disappear again. Only his face remained. Alice went out of the house and in a short while she found the March Hare's house. March Hare was having tea with the Mad Hatter under a tree. March Hare put some hay between his ears. Alice could not understand why he put hay between his ears. And the Mad Hatter had a hat on his head. The mouse between them had rested his head on the table sleeping. And they both had their arms on the mouse using him as a pillow. When they saw Alice coming, they opposed saying that there was no space available. No, there's plenty of room, said Alice. Mad Hatter asked Alice. Why do you think the crow looks like a desk? Why do you think? I don't know. Alice got really bored of these stupid and rude jokes of the Mad Hatter and March Hare. She said, this was the stupidest meeting I have been to and went away. Alice noticed a door in the trunk of a tree. When she entered, she found a golden key. The golden key opened the door to a beautiful garden. Entering the garden, Alice was very surprised. The gardeners of the Queen of the Hearts were painting all the white roses to red. And all the men looked like playing cards. So Alice asked, I'm curious, why are you painting all the white roses red? So the gardener answered. The queen wanted red roses, but we accidentally grew white roses. If the queen finds out, she will chop our hats off. Right at that moment, the queen of hearts came to the garden. 
The soldiers next to her were all in the shape of playing cards. Queen of Hearts invited this strange girl she saw for the first time to play croquet. Alice never saw a croquet field like this one before. Hedgehogs were balls and flamingos were the croquet mullets. In the middle of the game, the players started to fight and throw hedgehogs at each other. The Queen was very upset with this situation. She suddenly stomped her foot on the floor and yelled with anger. Chop off the heads of all the players who fight! The Queen of Hearts was so angry, she cancelled the croquet party. And suddenly, there was a loud voice. The trial has begun! Everybody started to run towards the court. A trial was going to be held for Jack of Hearts, who supposedly had stolen a pie from the Queen's kitchen. The Queen could not catch the Jack of Hearts during this incident, therefore she could not punish him. The Jack of Hearts was held in prison during his trial. The White Rabbit started to read from the roll of paper he was holding. On a beautiful summer day, our Queen of Hearts had baked delicious pies, and the Jack of Hearts had stolen them. The King yelled from his seat. Call the first witness! The first witness was the Mad Hatter. When the Mad Hatter started to talk on the witness stand in front of the King, Alice suddenly started to grow. The White Rabbit announced that it was time for Alice to take the witness stand. Hearing her name being called, Alice immediately stood up. Forgetting how big she grew, when her dress tangled on the jury stand, she turned the stand upside down, making all the members of the jury fall on the floor. The Queen asked Alice to tell everything she knows. I don't know anything, Alice answered. The Queen yelled, furiously. You don't? Chop her head off too! And Alice answered bravely. I don't care about your orders. You are not my Queen and so you can't do anything to me. As soon as Alice said these words, the King, Queen and all the playing cards started to fly towards Alice. Screaming away, Alice tried to catch them. All the commotion became a big whirlpool of cards around Alice, sucking her inside and flying her up. And finally, with the leaves flying all around her, she found herself on the field again. Her sister called out. Alice, come on now, wake up. When Alice woke up, she realised that everything was a dream. Oh, wow! It was all a dream and what an amazing dream it was! Hey, sis, let me tell you about my dream. You know, a white rabbit 